Hello and welcome to my channel. This is a fairly complex drawing of Saruman as portrayed by Christopher Lee in the Lord of the Rings movies. But before I show you the drawing process, I just want to share with you an older drawing of Saruman I did a few years ago. And here it is. This one focused a little bit more on his face and the beard and the palantir that he's holding. Uh, but this new one uh, will be focusing more on the entire scene and it will have a little bit more of the background. It's based on that scene where Saruman is unleashing his army of orcs against Rohan. So let's have a look. I'm doing my sketch and in my reference photo the background was a little bit different and like I said the reference photo is taken from the movie from that scene where Saruman is launching his army and Orthanc is designed a little bit differently but I wanted a more of a classic aged castle look that's, a, that's why I will put all of these stones in the background as you will see and behind him there is sort of an arch and I'll make that part of the background very dark that's why I'm going to use a soft charcoal pencil for it uh, as for my tools I'm going to be using mostly woodless charcoal pencils and I normally use two grades a medium one and a soft one the soft one is very dark and that's what I'm using here it's almost pitch black and one of the things you need to remember when you have a very dark background is that whatever it is in the foreground, your main subject, needs to be shaded with a sufficient amount of value and a, with, a, with a sufficient range of value so that it would pop out against that dark background so that the background doesn't swallow the main subject and makes it look flat. Anyway, I'm blending that with my finger. I'll clean up the edges a little bit later and these are the edges around his staff here um, so this area is almost completely black and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well now don't worry if uh, this looks too dark and a little bit difficult to remove charcoal is not that difficult to erase but that also depends on the blending tools you used so right now I'm going to have to uh, try to put in a little bit more detail and to try to define the, the shape of this staff a bit more. It has some kind of a, a ball or a spherical shape inside and I'm going to shade the background as well. That's going to be the wall and the arch behind. And I'm also going to use uh, use this charcoal pencil to define some of the shapes on that arch and on that on that wall behind. I'm trying to separate it into individual stones. Right now, I'm just making suggestions of the outlines of those stones. I want them to look as irregular as possible and maybe even damaged and broken here and there but once I defined these darker areas and the midtones I'm using a pencil eraser and this is an eraser in a pencil it's made by Kohinoor and I'm using it to draw some highlights on these stones where I thought that, where I think the the stone would be getting more light around these edges and I'm doing that so that the stones would look a little more three-dimensional, like they're kind of sticking out. So here I'm going to start working on the on Saruman's face. And I zoomed in a little bit. I'm going to first do a little bit of work with a soft charcoal pencil for some of these dark areas. Uh, one of the good things about these woodless charcoal pencils is that they can be sharpened a bit better than the regular charcoal pencils. That's why I'm able to get a very nice dip 
and to draw some thinner lines but later I will have to refine some of these shapes with a medium charcoal pencil which is a little bit harder and which can give me a bit more precision. Also in addition to these woodless charcoal pencils I'll also be using vine charcoal so I'm hoping that these two grades of charcoal pencils in combination with vine charcoal will give me a sufficient range of value and enough flexibility so that I can uh, shade a subject even as compl complex as this one. And obviously the most complex part of this drawing will be Saruman's face and his hair and beard. In this particular case, for the beard, I'm not going to use any indentations I'm just going to erase with a pencil eraser, the same one that I used on those stones in the background. So I'm working uh, with a medium charcoal pencil, trying to define some areas around the uh, some of the, these lines and shapes around the eye, as well as the eyebrows. And uh, I'm also trying to clean up uh, the area around the head, and also in between the hair and the face. For now I'm just going to leave some suggestions of darker areas in between the hair and the beard and later I'm going to be adding more texture and more detail to both the hair and the beard and adding some flyaway hairs which will make everything look a lot more realistic and detailed. So like I said the the reference is based off a scene from a movie and the actor is Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee was initially considered for the role of Gandalf, if I'm not mistaken, but he ended up portraying the evil uh, wizard Saruman and I personally think that he would do great in both of these roles. Anyway, I'm doing a little bit of shading around his hand, which is holding the staff, uh, but unfortunately my camera wasn't adjusted very well, so I think you may have missed a part of that work there. Anyway, I shaded the right side of the hand, uh, the left side of the hand, so that it's a little bit darker, and now I'm proceeding with the shading of the top of that staff. This ball in the middle of this, uh, the staff is supposed to look kind of shiny and a little bit reflective so I'm going to leave some lighter parts on it and shade the rest of it gently. The staff has a spiky, angular, menacing look and I'm trying to shade it as well as define its edges so that it stands out against the background. I don't want it to blend into the background entirely. Um, I'm using the pencil eraser to clean up the edges and the medium charcoal pencil to draw some of the cleaner, sharper lines where I need them. Needless to say, as you can see from the from the lighting on his hand, the light source will be coming mostly from the right side. So the left side will usually be darker unless there is a bit of reflect a reflected light, like for example on his sleeve. But that also goes for his face and the hair the left side of his face and hair will be a lot darker than the right side because of the light source. It's always important to stay consistent with your light source but it's also important to remember that light can come from different directions and can also reflect from different surfaces so it isn't always quite that simple. Uh, right now I'm just uh, 
doing some basic shading on this hand and I'll probably have to refine the areas in between the fingers a bit more I might get back to it a bit later right now I just want to establish some of the uh, larger contrasts between the lighter and darker areas so I'm using a pencil eraser to clean up the lighter areas around these knuckles and fingers to give everything a little more depth and there's also a nice shadow from the staff which is uh, casted from the from uh, right to left now I'm going to start defining the edge of this here and I'm gonna start uh, I'm gonna do that by drawing some of these flyaway hairs I don't really need too many of those honestly and I don't need all of them to stand out I just uh, need to make a few of them here and there just so that I can break up that perfectly straight line of the hair and make it look like uh, maybe the wind is uh, flying fl from uh, blowing from uh, right to left and I'm also uh, defining some of the some of the edges around uh, this thumb and the nail he has fairly long nails but that will become more obvious when I draw the other hand which will be resting on the parapet anyway uh, that should probably do it for now for the hair and the hand and I'll continue drawing the face making some suggestions of these uh, darker areas around the eyes like the wrinkles and the eyelashes and the pupils you can see how sharp my a woodless charcoal pencil is that's one of the advantages of woodless charcoal pencils they're all charcoal and they tend to be a little bit difficult to break than the regular charcoal pencils I'm right now using a medium charcoal pencil which I can use for both drawing and shading some of these areas both the medium and the soft charcoal pencil are fairly dark but the soft one is especially dark and that's a good thing to use to your advantage if you want to create a nice range of value but if you want to create some nice smooth transitions from lighter values to darker values you might also need to use vine charcoal which is what I'm going to use in addition to these pencils vine charcoal is a nice addition to charcoal pencils because uh, it makes the work a lot easier especially uh, when trying to create those transition effects when shading and um, uh, when you need to move the charcoal around a little bit more easily when you need something that's uh, modified a bit more easily and that doesn't create as much texture but here on the right side of the face I'm using a bit more of this medium charcoal pencil first because I don't really care if it creates a little bit more texture and second because that part of the face really needs to be a bit darker uh, this, is, this will be the, the shadow area or the shadow side of the face and I will obviously need to establish a sufficient amount of contrast between the left side and the right side I will clean up the top edge of that hair a bit later because that needs to stand out in contrast against the background as well right now I'm just making some suggestions of mustache and uh, some uh, of the facial hair around the mouth as well as the shape of the mouth itself uh, the left side of the nose is also going to be darker than the right side of the nose but I need to shade the whole of the nose uh, so that the highlight on the tip of the nose would stand out so what you want to do whenever you're shading uh, you want to make sure that you use your lightest lights and your darkest darks sparingly so that you can have a nice range of value that's why there will be very very few areas on this drawing which I will leave completely white 
when I finish the drawing, some of, it will seem like a large part of the paper is white when you look at it at first, but when you examine it a little bit more closely, you will see that there are very, very small portions of that paper which were left untouched by either the pencil or the brush. And um, one of the tricky things when drawing specific characters, when you're trying to achieve likeness, is that uh, when the, both the, the reference photo and your own drawing is a little bit smaller, it can be a little bit challenging to achieve likeness. In fact, sometimes it can be pretty difficult. So that's where most of my effort will be focused. And I'll often have to step away from my drawing and zoom out of my reference photo to check whether the overall facial structure resembles the person in the reference photo. So I always find like, uh, I, I always uh, think that there is like a, a medium, medium sized portraits are the easiest to draw in a way because they're neither too large nor too small. The large portraits, uh, the, the disadvantage with larger portraits is that uh, because they're so large, you can often get caught up in the details and forget about the larger relationships. And if you're just a little bit off, you can make huge mistakes. And when you look at a large portrait at a distance, uh, it can look like a completely different person because the facial features got distorted. Now the challenge with smaller portraits with smaller faces is because they're so small that there is very very little room for mistake and you have to draw with a great deal of precision and that's not always easy especially if you're using tools like charcoal pencils which aren't really known for their precision So I guess this is a little bit easier with graphite pencils. This type of drawing would be a bit easier with graphite pencils in terms of achieving likeness and drawing the details on Saruman's face and the beard. But I think the background is a lot easier to do with charcoal because charcoal uh, creates these darker areas very quickly and easily and is spread around very easily even though it's also messier than graphite. Now if you're wondering, uh, can I just combine graphite with charcoal? Well, you can, but in this case it would be a bad idea to draw the main subject in graphite and do the background in charcoal because the background would be simply too dark in comparison to the main subject because graphite is a lot lighter than charcoal and if you're combining graphite with charcoal you need to keep in mind that you should be using graphite only for the lighter areas and that um, you would have to use charcoal even in some areas of your main main subject otherwise the dark background the dark values of the background would simply swallow up the main subject which is not good I'm using a kneaded eraser to lift up some of the charcoal in some areas of the face in order to define the topography of the face so that I can achieve a little bit more likeness with Christopher Lee. And I think uh, one of the most challenging areas was around the eyes and the eyebrows. There's a lot of tiny details there <clears throat> which I needed to define but I think I'm getting there and there's also a nice highlight here on the tip of the nose and like I said I needed to shade all of the nose for that highlight to stand out that's why I always say that you need to use your lightest light sparingly and obviously the left side of the nose is a lot darker than the right one because of the light source. I also added a little bit of texture and a little bit of these spots on his face and forehead 
because he is an older man. So these textures and spots always add a little bit more to the realism and make the whole drawing a bit more interesting. Right now I'm just going in betwe between these uh, wrinkles and trying to make them look uh, a little bit more three-dimensional. And you can see what a large amount of detail you can achieve even on a charcoal drawing. Uh, now I'm using a pencil eraser to draw some of the details on the mustache and the beard, but that's just the beginning. I'm going to be doing a little bit more of that later when I tackle the beard. Right now I did a bit of work on those mustache and it already looks like white hair, so uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that part of the drawing is going. Uh, that's why I'm going to move on a bit with the background to define that a little bit more and to draw some more of that darker stony background. And when I finish that, I'll get back to drawing, drawing my main subject and drawing that beard. So I guess you might say that I need a little bit of rest before I move on with the beard. These large beards, white beards, are always uh, fairly complex. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're working with a pencil eraser or, or if you're using that pointed stick indentation technique, it'll always require a little bit of work and refining. So I defined some of these dark areas in between these stones and right now I went over it uh, with, a, with a bit of charcoal pencil as well as a vine charcoal and then I blended everything with a brush and um, added a bit more value in some areas which I felt were a little bit too light. Now here because this is, a, this is an old stony wall I don't really care if there is a lot of texture and variation in value because you would expect the stones to be different from one another both in, in terms of shape and also in terms of color and texture. I'm just shading the rest of this background here with a soft charcoal pencil and I'm going to blend that with a with my finger as well and refine the edges a bit later. If I go over the white areas it doesn't really matter because I'm going to clean them up later. I'm going to go in between these individual stones with a soft charcoal pencil and define, uh, define them individually. I'm going to use both the soft and the medium charcoal pencil. I'm going to use the soft charcoal pencil for these darkest cracks in between them. And I'm going to use the medium charcoal pencil for most of the texturing and drawing around their shape. As you can see, I'm trying to keep their shape um, kind of and size kind of irregular. I don't really care if they vary too much in terms of in terms of size and shape. I'm just adding a little bit more texture. I felt that the right side was a little bit too light side so I made it a bit darker and I, and I added a bit more texture overall. And uh, now I'm back to working with that pencil eraser just adding some highlights to these stones. These are very important because they make everything look more three-dimensional they make these uh, stones stand out as separate objects and they give a little more depth to the to the whole drawing I'm not only, I'm not only working around the edges with this pencil eraser I'm also adding a few details here and there uh, on the surface of the stone as well because I want the surface to look uneven and kind of rough maybe with a few cracks here and there here I added a little bit more value to the right to the left side of Saruman's face 
to enhance that contrast so that I can show that uh, the left side of his forehead is facing away from the light source. And now I added a few uh, darker areas to his beard because I'm going to want to create some depth in that beard and in order to do that I need to have a nice range of value I need to create some darker areas as well so the lighter hair the the white hairs will not stand out if they do, uh, if they don't have a dark background to stand out against and the same goes for the end of that or the lower part of that beard that's why first I'm going to have to shade around it a little bit. So here I'm adding a bit more of these darker values on the beard itself and I'm just defining some of the details on Saruman's outfit like this belt and some other details on the robe and on the gown he's wearing and I'm defining the area in between the hair and the beard. Uh, both his beard and the hair are kind of flying to the side because of the wind. So I thought that was also a nice detail and I wanted to capture that as well. Um, I'm going to have to add some areas of shadow here on the left side of the rope in between his body and uh, the rope and the sleeve because that area is in the shadow and I'm gonna have to clean up the edge of that staff to make the staff stand out against that background but I can't overdo it I can't make the this area completely dark in comparison to the sleeve because I need to have some continuity So here I'm making some indications of the folds in the clothes here and there where I will later do a bit more shading but for now I'm just doing these to give myself an idea uh, where these folds should be and what the overall shape of the body and the clothes are uh, it looks like. Um, I also went over both the hair and the beard uh, a little bit with a soft brush adding a little bit of value to it before I start drawing some highlights in this area in between the beard and the hair needs to be defined so that we so that the viewer can understand where the hair ends and the beard begins even though obviously some of the hairs will be overlapping but I still need to make it clear that these are two separate objects. Anyway, I'm back to working with a pencil eraser and I'm starting to draw the beard and I'm starting with the edge of the beard by drawing some of these flyaway hairs and making the shape as irregular and as random as possible, keeping in mind that because of the wind, both the, both the hair and the and the beard are kind of flying to the left side. And now you can see the importance of those darker areas which I initially laid down because without them these lighter hairs or highlights that I'm drawing now simply wouldn't stand out, they wouldn't be visible. As for the tool that I'm using, a lot of people often ask are you using a white pencil? What is that white pencil you're using? It's not a pencil, it's an eraser it's a rubber in a wood casing. It can be sharpened like a pencil but it's essentially an eraser. It's a Kohinoor eraser, that's the brand. Uh, you can use, also use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser if you can find it, that's even better. Uh, but I have this one and it's doing a pretty good job as you can see. One thing to remember though, if you want to keep these lines clean and thin is that you have to keep resharpening your pencil every now and then and you just uh, cut off the tip a little bit so that you can create a sharp edge and by using that edge you can actually produce some very nice looking thin white lines 
but like I said, this simply wouldn't work, wouldn't work if you didn't lay down some areas of darker value first, because that is what gives the beard its depth, and uh, that's what gives it a three-dimensional look. If you don't do that, you'll just have a large white area where these white lines will simply not show up. And another thing that's important is, is that you want to make it look like some of these lighter hairs are lighter than the others so that uh, it looks like some of the white hairs are sitting on top of the others and getting more light because uh, because they're closer to the light source and you can do that by creating layers layering them one on top of the other and also varying the amount of pressure that you're using with your pencil eraser anyway um, I done most of the work on the beard I'm going to define the edges a little bit later but I have a sufficient amount of shadow under that beard now so that won't be uh, difficult and now I'm trying to uh, define some of the details on the clothes I just added a touch of darker value here and there on the beard just to give give it a little bit more depth uh, but I need to do a little bit more work on the clothes once I finish with the beard. When you have a complex drawing like this, it's very important to, uh, to make sure that you don't neglect any of, <clears throat> any of the parts of it because uh, that will kind of spoil the overall appearance. So if I oversimplify the clothes now, uh, it will kind of ruin the whole drawing. That's why I had to put in a little bit more work into the clothes and into these folds around the sleeves and the uh, and the rest of the robe. I didn't make it quite as complex as my reference photo, nor could I make out all of the details in my reference photo, but I just tried to make it as detailed as possible. Um, all of that uh, which I said about paying attention that everything looks as neat and as detailed as possible uh, applies to your main subject. Uh, if you're talking about background, the background can sometimes be simplified. And another way you can get away with simplifying things if, is if you're drawing a portrait and you create a vignette, then you can simplify some of the details because you fade the some parts of the drawing into the background and then you can simplify the details around the clothes and maybe omit a lot of the details but I'm not doing that here here I'm doing the whole scene and I want every bit of it I want every part of it to be very detailed and very realistic looking so you can see how I finished off that end of the beard that lower portion of the beard by adding some flyaway hairs and again the reason why these hairs are visible and why they stand out so nicely is because I uh, f first shaded the clothes under them to create some shadow and also to create some background uh, against which uh, these white hairs would stand out so it's all about re achieving a range of value and achieving contrast in value here I'm adding some shadows uh, from the robe which are uh, casted from right to left and defining the hair on the right drawing some flyaway hairs trying to break up that hair into some smaller hairs and a bit more shadow here around this string around his belt I don't want the clothes to look flat and uninteresting I want to capture at least some of the detail I can't really make out the pattern on the belt but I just added some shapes to make it a bit more interesting sometimes you just have to improvise now I'm moving on to the to the right side of the clothes and shading the lower area a little bit darker because there's going to be more shadow there but I'm also adding some vine charcoal on these folds the reason why I used vine charcoal 
on the sleeve there on the right was because I knew that I was going to be able to manipulate it very easily to make these soft transitions uh, between the areas where the shadow is a little bit darker in between the folds and in these transition areas where it is a little bit lighter so I think it's usually a good idea to combine compressed charcoal and charcoal pencils with vine charcoal both of them have some uh, very useful properties that you can use to your advantage I'm just in the process of kind of uh, deepening some of these folds by adding a little more shadow in them and around them making uh, making them stand out and making them more three-dimensional and I'm also adding some details here um, just a pattern that I saw on my reference photo something something like that don't really need to do too much I think the key to making his clothes look realistic of course will be achieving contrast between the lighter areas uh, lighter areas and darker areas always keeping in mind where the light source is where the light is coming from and as long as I stay consistent with that I think uh, it'll look very realistic and I'll also be able to achieve some nice contrast I added a bit of charcoal powder on the right side so that I can make a little more progress on the background but I'll obviously need to clean up the edge of that sleeve on the right and I added a few flyaway hairs on the right side of the head as well um, no need to overdo it just a few details here and there really make a, a lot of difference but sometimes people can go, get caught up in, in um, drawing these elaborate details and then paradoxically it ends up looking less realistic so it's usually enough to make a few suggestions and let it go just leave it when it looks good before you start uh, before you start spoiling it anyway I'm finishing the background here I added a bit of value on the right side just so that it would look as dark as the rest of this wall and now I'm going to move on with the with these uh, stones the way that I did uh, above his head and on the left again I'm adding some darker areas in between trying to define individual stones but as I've already mentioned I'm deliberately trying to make them irregular both in terms of shape and size because these are not modern buildings uh, made out of bricks which are almost all identical so now I'm softening some of the edges with a brush where needed but I want some of these areas to remain a little bit darker I want to retain some of that contrast in some of the areas I may, get, I may go, uh, go back in with a bit of uh, soft charcoal pencil just to uh, reinforce some of these darker areas and now I'm just gonna use a pencil eraser to try to clean up the right side of this sleeve, the right edge and notice that, I, I don't really know if you'll be able to notice but uh, most of this sleeve is not exactly white I've covered it with a bit of value by dragging a soft brush over it so it has a bit of value only the very edge is almost completely white so I'm using those highlights very sparingly and I'm trying to do the same thing with, the, uh, with these walls uh, with these uh, stones rather as well by adding a few highlights here and there just to, so that I could make these stones look a bit more three-dimensional but the key thing uh, the, the most important thing for me to do was 
to achieve contrast between the left side and the right side of my main subject or the shadow side and the light side of him and I think I've uh, I've already done that there's no need to modify that the hair the beard the face on the left and as well as the clothes is quite a bit darker than the right side and that's what I was going for and now I need to de uh, decide what to do with this parapet that he is resting his hand on initially I made it a little bit too dark I didn't want to make it quite that dark because I want the amount of value to kind of match the wall between uh, behind him so I need to make it a little bit lighter but first I uh, made sure that my edge the, the top edge is mostly level and clean and then I removed a little bit of value using a kneaded eraser by lifting up some charcoal and then I started working on the details by adding some textures and further defining some smaller details like some uh, irregularities in the stone and maybe some cracks and things like that so eventually I lifted up a little bit more charcoal using a kneaded eraser until I was sure that I made it light enough and then I added a bit more texture on top using a medium charcoal pencil just dragging it across these stones to give them a bit more texture and to make the surface appear a little more rough the next thing that I had to do was to define the edge around the hand because I need a clean edge between the background uh, be between that stone and the hand uh, because I need to define the finger as well and just like with the other parts of this drawing I mustn't oversimplify the hands they are a very important detail so I started shading the fingers and he has fairly long fingernails and I'm gonna to have to work around them a little bit to make the make the edge a little bit smoother but at the same time cleaner so I did a shading I did the shading using a combination of vine charcoal and blending tools mostly but later as you will see I will use a little bit of black colored pencil this is a black colored pencil by the way the reason why I use that was because I felt that I needed something even more precise to define some of these edges and some of these details around the fingernails and the fingers as well as a few other details the drawing is done here I put my signature in the lower left corner so there it is another Lord of the Rings drawing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.